Have you ever wondered how an e-bike battery works? Today we're going to go into a little bit of detail on how they work. I'm going to repair this one and I just thought that you guys might want to know how they work. Now remember, this is very, very important. If you do decide to take this apart, make sure you do your research first because it can be extremely dangerous, especially if you short it out. It will catch fire and you can't put it in. So if you are uncomfortable in doing anything like this, please don't attempt it. So let's get into it. So essentially an e-bike battery is a big battery for either an e-bike, an e-scooter or even a, a e-motorbike or something along those lines. It is made up by a lot of these cells which are 1865 cells and depending how they sit in the case and how they're wired up they can make different voltages and different amperages. So if this is on its own it would be 3.7 volt at 3 amp pound. If you join them together negative to negative over four batteries, it would still be 3.7 volt, but now it will be 12 amp hour. If you do them in parallel, so positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, it then becomes 12 volt at 3 amp hour. And that's essentially all it is. Uh, when you have a, a BMS system, which is battery management system, what happens is you get a wire that goes from positive to negative, which is your main, and then you get a balance lead, which you have one on your primary negative, and then one on the positive, next positive, next positive, next positive, next positive. And what this does is it um, controls... At the end of the charge cycle, it can tell what the voltage is on every signal battery and it uses a small amount of ampage to try and make sure that they're all the same amount. With a BMS system, what it does is it reduces the chance of you under or overcharging your battery because again, over discharging your battery can destroy them and overcharging them can destroy them. Because there is a, like an oxidizer in these batteries as well, doesn't matter if you spray foam on it, water on it, or anything like that, it's not going to put out. The only way to actually let the, the only way to get these batteries out is to leave them and let them burn through their cycle. As you can imagine, in a house, this is rather dangerous and you're going to draw it, destroy all your stuff. So with this battery, it turns out that the battery management system has actually gone and this means that it won't charge and it won't give you any voltage. The way to check this is when you actually plug it into your device, you get your multimeter, which is here. It might be a little bit hard for you to see, but we'll give it a go. Good, good. So you turn your multimeter on to voltage, and then you check your voltage over the polarities, and as it has actually came back on now, but it's saying 53.6. When I did the original test on this, um, it worked for 10 minutes, the battery voltage went down to zero, and then it wouldn't come back on again. So we're going to change the BMS system on this battery to try and make it work as it should. The other problem with this one as well is one of the cells or one of the um, racks of cells uh, was showing a really low voltage compared to all the others. So the battery management system wasn't actually charging the first cell, which means that as soon as that cell goes down to two point, I think it's 2.2 volts, the whole battery cuts out. And that's to protect the whole cell. So anyway, let's get into it. So take the top off and they will usually be wrapped in something. So this one was actually wrapped in plastic and it is wrapped in this wax paper as well. So as you can see, I don't want to short this out. You've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different cells and that makes it up to 48 volt and then you've got 4 cells in parallel which increases it to 13 amp. Now underneath here is the BMS system. This controls uh, the input voltage, the charging voltage and it balances the batteries as well. 
But as you can see, this one it is slightly bigger than this one. This one's 30 amps. This one's capable of outputting 60 amps. The batteries can handle it. Uh, so yeah. Also, a good thing with this one is I've made sure that I've got the same plug on this one for all the balance cables, and that means that I don't have to resolder all the balance cables. So this means that I just have to solder on a negative to the battery, a negative to the output, and a negative to the charger. The positive goes directly onto the positive of the batteries. Now, there's a couple of reasons why you might find that these go dead. 99% of the time is because of this. The BMS system either gets too hot and fails, bad soldering and fails, water damage and fails. 99.9% .9 of the time there's nothing wrong with the batteries. It's usually the BMS. To replace this battery it's about £120 to £400 to £1000 depending on what type of bike or scooter or moped you're taking them out of. To actually repair or replace this, the BMS system, I bought this one for, uh, I think it was about £14. To get one for a bigger boy, you are looking a lot more money. So you do pay a little bit more for quality. This BMS is a cheap one and chances are it will last for a while. But for this sort of use, uh, an e-bike, I've never had any issues. If they're going to break, they usually break straight away. And then you send them back to Amazon, then they send you out another one. But you can get all singing, all dancing ones with Bluetooth and um, Wi-Fi connectivity and all this sort of stuff. Do you need it? Maybe not. All I'm going to say to this is I'm not going to show you how to do this. There's many, many tutorials on the internet on how to do this. If you don't know what you're doing, please don't do it because it is extremely dangerous. There are things that you can do to make it safer, i.e. have a bucket of sand next to you, do it outside. If it does start to combust, get it in that bucket of sand, walk away. Don't obviously walk away and leave it. Just make sure that it's, it's safe. And if you don't understand what you're doing, I would just leave it. There are plenty of people out there that are going to charge you about 30, 40 pounds to do this to your battery. It's probably safer to get them to do it than to do it yourself. So this is just a demonstration of what's inside an e-bike battery. I am going to change the BMS on this one. I'm not going to do a video on it because I, I don't want to be responsible for somebody copying me and burning their house down. So I just wanted to do a demonstration of what's inside so that you don't have to take yours apart. You will be able to find somebody local that's going to be able to repair these for about 30 to 40 pounds. Um, if your bike's under warranty, take it back. Get them to repair it. That's not your problem. This bike isn't actually under warranty. I bought it off of Facebook for 150 pounds with a 1500 watt motor and controller. So yeah, I'm just doing it up because I like to do this sort of stuff. So this is different to some of my other content. As I've been saying, um, the way that I have to do YouTube at the minute has changed slightly. So hopefully you like this sort of content. If you do, comment below and tell me that I've done a good job. If you've got any questions, also comment below because I answer every single one. Now, please help me to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year by hitting that subscribe button. And that tells the YouTube algorithm that I'm doing a good job. If you didn't like my content, tell me below how I can make it better in the future. But as always, right side.